Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the G3X avionics package. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the G3X, so the G3X is the standard package for a lot of experimental and ultralight planes. If you want to think about it kind of another way, it's a G3000, but they took off a bunch of digits and just replaced it with the letter X just to make it, you know, sound cool, so to speak. It's actually a really, really neat avionics package, and it has a lot of uh, bells and whistles that you don't typically expect to see in aircraft like that. Let's play around with the RPM real quickly here. I'm going to get it exactly where I want. Obviously, we're dealing with a Rotax engine here, so 5,500 is always our limit. You can always just drop it down to 5,000 and never have to worry about it. That's kind of one of those little tricks that works really, really well here. And we'll put it close enough. You're never going to get it exact in the real plane anyway. Don't even bother trying. All right, delightful. So the G3X package consists of two different screens. We have our PFD over here on our left, and we have our MFD over here on our right. Now, one of the things you got to remember about a lot of these aircraft is these were designed specifically for the purposes of like their ultralights, the very, very lightweight, short performance. Uh, these are not IFR airplanes. So a lot of the things that we typically need in an IFR airplane in order to keep us safe are simply just not required for us. Instead, we can rely on basically operating it just by looking out the window, so to speak, as well as having that little bit of updated information that we might need. I'm going to go ahead and pause this right here. Unfortunately, we do not have automatic pilot in this one. And this will allow us to take a closer look. The PFD has a bunch of different options that you have on it, depending exactly what you're trying to achieve with it. You're going to notice that this is the same style as the G1000 that you're going to have on top of here. You're going to have your airspeed on your left, true airspeed down here. You're going to have your little HSI, which is going to provide us with direction information as well as select direction. You're going to have our little attitude line here, which is going to be providing us with information as to where our horizon is. You have our little nose here, which is going to tell us. Unfortunately, in this version, we don't have the little flying wings here, the flight path vector. We have our altitude over here on the right. We have a vertical speed right here. We have our current barometric pressure setting located right here. And of course, we have our selected altitude right here. Now, one of the things that makes this an interesting unit, whereas in a lot of the other aircraft that we've encountered, we often see that the knobs for the different selecting is going to be a separate component built into the automatic pilot itself. We don't actually have that. Instead, what you have is these two control knobs sitting here on the bottom left and the bottom right. By taking, for example, you see we have an outer knob and we have an inner knob. If I take the outer knob and I go ahead and crank that, you'll notice that my selected altitude is currently changing. The way the logo works here is the big one is always the big one. The little one in the middle is always the little one in the middle. So let's say I want to select here an altitude of, I'm going to go up to 2,500 feet, for example. Now let's say I want to take an heading of uh, due east. Notice, by the way, there's no boop pushing the button in the center in order to quickly synchronize your heading. I have to actually sit here and crank on this sucker. There we are. It looks like about a 90 degree heading. Over here on the right, of course, we can select our course. Uh, we don't have a course right now, but if I wanted to, and notice the big knob is barometric pressure, the little one lets me select my course. Uh, currently, I'm on GPS on route mode. I'd have to change this over to VOR mode and things like that. The other buttons you're going to notice here is we have a nearest button, which will immediately tell us where the closest airport is. For example, if in an emergency, if I need to get back to DXR, I can click on that and immediately activate it so that I can take myself back to that particular flight plan. You also notice there's the standard direct to button. Uh, for example, if I wanted to go somewhere up here, I could take my mouse where it says the actual airport itself, click on that. Let's say we want to go fly over to, uh, we'll do Robertson today. Let's do a four and we're going to say Bravo and we're going to say eight like that. I'm going to press the enter key, activate, and you can see it automatically will capture that and uh, line us up, which conveniently we're basically on the correct direction for. To the right, you can have a button that says menu. Uh, pressing menu is basically going to bring up a secondary page. Uh, what you have here is we have our map. Uh, the reason I'm not going to press this is because we have a map. But if you wanted to, you could actually press that and split the screen. Now, one of the things that you probably know from the G3000 is these split screens are super handy, except when they get in your way. So if you actually take your mouse up to the top where it says full, if you click on that, that will take away the split. If I click it again, it'll split it back to full. Now, this is going to be an important point in a minute, and I'll show you why. Going back to our menu for a second here, you have the active flight plan. Uh, currently, uh, we have no origin. If we wanted to, we could come in here. We could actually dial in the origin. Obviously, we took off from Danbury here. So we'd say uh, Danbury just like that. And you can see it actually will automatically update our flight plan for that particular point. One thing you got to watch out for, though, if you need to click and drag, you can click and drag here like this. By the way, touchscreens in airplanes are a lot harder to use than you think they are. I'm going to press done real quickly. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with all that. I'll press done. And notice it's just going to keep coming back to this original page. Now, if we want to get out of this, we can come down and press the back button, which again, notice does nothing. Or you'll notice there's three buttons down here on the bottom. 
If I were to press the map button, it will take me back to where it was. So again, active, I click down here. Notice no matter which one of those three buttons I press, it will always snap me back into this mode. If I click up here, and notice by the way, I can actually click and drag to look around for different airports and things like that. Like there's my CT-52. If that happens, of course, I can always come back and press this button. But again, you're gonna click any of these down here. Or if you're old school, of course, you can press the menu button as well. The proc button is exactly what you think it is. Now we can actually pick approaches. I don't know why I'd be flying an approach into this particular airport, but we could. Again, this is more of a VFR plane, but those options are here. And again, coming down here and clicking this will bring us back. The setup page, unfortunately for us, uh, the only thing we have here is going to be the brightness. If you click here and set this to manual, you can actually sit here and drag this and I bring the brightness down, which is very useful for flying at nighttime. And again, this should auto adjust. Again, click down here to go back, go back to the main menu here. Down here, we have a selection of different frequency selectors. Now, there's actually multiple ways to control the frequency on a G3X. Uh, one method, of course, we can do is we can take our mouse, we can click on COM1 frequency, 121700, if we're over there, I can press enter. And what that will do is that will stand by that frequency. Now, if I want to flip, all I have to do is I can come down here and press transfer, or if I left click on the actual active frequency, you'll see that it automatically does the flip for us. Now, what you also see here, let's go ahead and back to that page, is we can go ahead and dial in our COM2 radio if we had that one set up. Uh, right now, I'm not using my COM2 radio at all, so I'm actually going to leave that off, but that is there. The other important thing that we have here is our nav frequencies. If, for example, I wanted to uh, fly an ILS approach or I wanted to go talk to this one, I could type in the navigational frequency I want, press on the transfer button, and that's going to slam it into that particular component. Now, it's a really, really important point here is because our current CDI is selected to be GPS, it doesn't matter what frequency I dial in here because it's not going to pay much attention to us in that regard. And again, until I leave this page, this doesn't go away. So if I press enter, it's going to go away. I can press back to full. Now, one of the things that confuses people with this particular one, by the way, that communications can be brought up by clicking right here at any time if you need to. You can always hit cancel to go back. You have your audio page if you want to turn on the different radios and the speaker, and I can worry about that. One of the things everybody gets confused with this is one real quickly is I'm flying flight following and I'd like to get myself a, a, a code, a transponder code. Coming up to here, same strategy. Let's say it's one, two, three, four, five. I can just come over here, alt, enter. Just like that, now we're also broadcasting alt and we have the ident button up here in the event that we need it. Now there's a hidden function built into this one that always confuses me to death here. Now, if you notice, if I just click up here, nothing happens, nothing happens. Ah, did you see that? Let me go back so you all can see what I just did here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Ah, you see that? So what it happens here is you actually can click on the HSI. When you press the HSI with your finger, it will actually allow you to change your CDI source. It'll also allow you to add some uh, bearing pointers here. If, for example, we wanted to do NAV1, we could program that in. Uh, NAV1, of course, is our, I guess we're a little out of range here, but that's okay because of what up here. We have a timer and we have this little more options. We can actually come in here and shut off synthetic vision. We can also turn the wing vector on to the uh, correct mode, and again, the way God intended. And that actually is all built in here. Um, you're going to accidentally click this about a thousand times, by the way. Again, I can just left click on that if I want to hide that. It's kind of a hidden screen. I don't love that about the G3X, but again, if I had a G3X in any plane I fly, I'd be a very happy camper, trust me. Over here on the right is going to be our, uh, this is going to be our MFD as opposed to our PFD. This is going to be providing us with everything that we've seen before. A couple different things on this one that makes it a little different. Um, you're going to notice this is all the same up top as we saw over on that side. You're going to notice we still have access to our communication radios. You'll see we still have the split function. Now, a lot of people say, why would you push the split function on this thing? Now you've just doubled my map and confused me. Well, let me explain why. On the bottom of this actual MFD, you're going to notice we have the big knobby things, not like we have here. Uh, using the big knob will control my zoom. The little knob, of course, will also control my zoom. Very disappointing, right? Watch what happens when I come over here and crank this. It changes my active page across the bottom. Now, the reason this is so useful is I can actually open up my flight plan here and have my flight plan visible while I'm actually navigating the rest of the aircraft. Uh, this is a very, very handy trick here because it'll provide you with things like, especially, I don't have a lot of waypoints here, but if I were to add another waypoint, uh, I don't know why I would add this waypoint, but because science, I suppose. If I add another waypoint, it'll actually provide me with handy, handy things like distances. I can say done, I'm all set with that. And now we know exactly how far away. We also have our desired track and everything built directly into <gasps> 5,000 RPM. Uh, we have uh, that all built in here. Now, if I wanted to get rid of this, of course, I could come up and press the full button and that will eliminate it. Uh, one problem everybody has with the G3X is they tend to do one of these actions and they lose their airplane. Just come up here and click that once and that will instantly reacquire your airplane. One thing people will do too is they'll click right on it like this and go, whoopsie daisies. Now, unfortunately for us on this version, I can't 
go up to uh, waypoints and click on them. Uh, that would be really handy. And I can't drive the arrow and hold the little pointer over and click on them to actually show you the details. It's kind of a bummer, but some of the G3Xs actually do have that capability. It's pretty slick. The last thing we want to see over on this side, again, these buttons are identical on this side as they were on the other side, is we have our handy dandy menu with everything built into it exactly as you would expect. And if you're a crazy person, of course, you can open up a dual maps here. And again, just kind of a neat little piece that they have. So as you can see, it's a very, very slick system. It all works very, very well. Um, I'm super impressed. Obviously, if you have an aircraft that has that system on it, you probably have a pretty nice airplane because it really does a lot of stuff. Uh, one interesting thing, too, if you're curious as to why don't I see this one on the 172? This seems like a perfect kind of package for the 172. It's because of the way certification of avionics works. Um, one of the interesting things you'll discover is just because you have the world's best avionics package does not necessarily mean it's been approved by the powers that be as being for particular types of flight operations, such as IFR, as an example. So even though it might be there, it might not be something you can actually use. Other than that, enjoy.